Hi, everybody. It's December 28, 2017. Our FBI is keeping us safe by foiling terrorist attacks that they create. Isn't it a wonderful country that we live in? Mainstream media and FBI push fake terror attack even after their patsy refused to do it. Wow. What is this article all about? FBI thwarts alleged plan to carry out, carry out a terrorist attack in San Francisco on Christmas, the Washington Post reported, and the New York Post joined in. FBI thwarts ISIS-inspired Christmas terror attack on San Francisco. The suspect, a former U.S. Marine sharpshooter, Everett Aaron Jamison, 26, he was discharged from the military for fraudulent en enlistment and now works as a tow truck driver. Wow. Can you hear the narrative? Discharged from the Army. Tow truck driver. Young guy. Influenced by ISIS. Yes, the Department of Justice released a statement confirming that Jensen has been arrested for attempting to provide material support to a foreign terrorist organization. Attempting to provide. I guess he didn't provide that support to a foreign terrorist organization. But if convicted, he faces 20 years in prison and 250000 in fines. That's right. Yeah. Listen to this. According to court documents, Jamison had several online interactions with a confidential source in which he expressed support for the October 31, 2017 terrorist attack in New York City and offered his services for the cause. In subsequent communications with an undercover agent, Jamison referred to his training in the U.S. military and noted he had been trained for combat and war. Jameson later met with another undercover agent whom he believed to be associated with the senior leadership of the foreign terrorist organization ISIS. During his interactions with this undercover agent, Jameson offered to carry out violent attacks and to provide financial support for the terrorist organization. But he didn't have any money. Where was he going to get that financial support to send to ISIS? Oh, I guess that would have been provided by our FBI. Did he really offer to carry out violent attacks? Unfortunately, we will never know the truth because we live in the country, the people of the lie. Everything is a lie, especially when it comes to our FBI, law enforcement agencies. So the question is, how did FBI agents find Jameson? And did he actually pose a threat of carrying out a terrorist attack? So the Los Angeles Times reported that Jameson began studying Islam one year ago after he became depressed and even suicidal over losing custody of his children. However, his family insisted that he did not have violent tendencies and had never mentioned anything about becoming involved with the Islamic State. He just ain't no terrorist, no way, Jameson's father said. He would never hurt people, not ever. It's just unbelievable. That's not who he is. Hmm. I have... Uh, I have a tendency to kind of believe the parent. Oh, well, you would think that the parent knows their child, right? But if that's who Jameson was, what happened to him? That suddenly he was studying Islam and wanted to convert, I guess, uh, and, and become an ISIS fighter. To, at this point, how is it possible that Americans could still believe that ISIS 
is actually an independent terrorist organization and not the creation of the United States funded, supported, trained by the United States, Israel, financially supported, Saudi Arabia. There's so much evidence. Six years, I've been posting videos, but six years, I've been noticing so many people posting videos showing the evidence that ISIS is the United States, Israel, Saudi Arabia. How could it be possible that Americans could still believe horseshit? Horseshit. Hmm. It's very upsetting. Yes, Jameson uh, first caught the agency's attention when a credible FBI confidential human source flagged his Facebook account as suspicious on September 19 for liking and loving posts that were pro-ISIS and pro-terrorism. One of the reasons why I'm doing this video is to show you guys that, yeah, when we live in a police state, when we have 24-7 surveillance of everything that we are doing on this internet here, well, all of those people who say, well, I have nothing to hide, I don't care. Maybe Jameson thought he had nothing to hide and he didn't care. Perhaps Jameson was one of those innocent patsies that the FBI decided because he liked and loved a post on Facebook, that was enough to set him up to be the terrorist that was just about to attack on Christmas Day in San Francisco. But the FBI foiled that attack. They needed, they needed that story to be out there. And you'll understand why in a moment. But, yeah. So, he apparently loved a post on November 29, 2017, that is an image of Santa Claus standing in New York with a box of dynamite. The text of the post reads, ISIS post image of Santa with dynamite threatening attack on New York. He selected the like option and then selected the heart option to signify that he loved the post. So be careful what you're doing with those, um, what are they called? Emote, emote cons or whatever. Just be careful using them. So the fact that Jameson liked to post on Facebook about an ISIS attack in the United States on Christmas Day does not guarantee that he would have actually carried out such an attack by himself. Conversations with Jameson that he had with the FBI informants show that he appeared eager to provide supplies for an attack on a crowded area and willing to carry that out. He was never in contact with a suspected member of ISIS and, well, what does the FBI mean by he appeared eager? And where would he get the supplies for an attack? And what do you mean willing to carry it out? FBI informants were holding bait in front of a depressed suicidal man and were giving him a sense of attention and companionship that he was likely lacking in his own life. Now, these are presumptions made by the uh, author of this article. How do we even know that that is true? We don't. The FBI could have fabricated everything that I just read. Everything. So, two days after meeting with the FBI informants in person, the criminal complaint noted that Jameson sent a message on December 18 saying, I don't think I can do this after all. I've reconsidered. Okay, so... The FBI was looking or influencing or forcing Jameson to provide these supplies for an attack? That's what it suggests to me. But Jameson said, I can't do it. I've reconsidered. I can't do it. All right, well, why would anybody, why would an FBI informant, which we don't get to know who the informant was, right? So we don't even know if there really was an informant. So we don't know if all of this is fabricated. But 
he says, I don't think I can do this after all. I've reconsidered. Okay. So he's telling the FBI, I can't carry out what you want me to do. But it was too late. Even though he had not harmed anyone and had declined to carry out the attack, the agents were trying to talk him into. The FBI obtained a search warrant for Jameson's home the next day. They seized a letter signed by Abdullah Abu Everett. I guess he did convert to Islam, right? We're going to believe that the FBI just picked up this letter and that it was actually written by Jameson or whoever the Abdullah Abu Everett is. I don't know. Um, a last will and testament and a series of weapons including a Winchester 22 caliber, caliber rifle, a Ruger, a Ruger M77, a Ruger 9mm handgun, magazines, ammunition, and fireworks. Oof. Wow. Okay. This guy was a sharp shooter for the Marines. Why wouldn't he have some guns? That to me doesn't sound uh, strange. You want to know why I'm going on and on and on with this? People's lives are being destroyed by our own government. Their lives are being destroyed with all of these lies. And that upsets me. So, how could this be possible? Well, the answer is simple. Tactics used by the FBI to set up poverty-stricken, mentally ill men by offering them large sums of money and weapons to commit crimes. Now, sharpshooter, Marines, lost custody of his children. Is he mentally ill? Really? Or is he experiencing feelings that one would experience just normally? Yeah, he's mentally ill. Um, Thomas Fuentes, former FBI assistant director, he was the one who defended the tactics used by the FBI to set up poverty-stricken mentally ill men by offering them large sums of money and weapons to commit crimes. So after Fuentes defended the FBI's role in bribing poor mentally diminished people to get them to commit crimes, he let out a bombshell statement confirming what many of us already know. If you're submitting a budget proposal for law enforcement agencies or an intelligence agency, you're not going to submit the proposal that we won the war on terror and everything's great because the first thing that's going to happen is your budget's going to be cut in half. You know it's my opposite of Jesse Jackson's keep hope alive. It's keep fear alive. Keep it alive. And that's how these agencies get their money. You keep fear alive. So you fabricate and set up people who are <clears throat> vulnerable to take the fall. to take the fall so that the FBI can pat themselves on the back <clears throat> and they can have their MSM, their mainstream media reporters. Wow, FBI, you are just so good. You're protecting the American people. You foiled another terrorist attack on Christmas Day. I'm so sick of this country. Keep fear alive. And you know what, Americans? Sorry, they're such wussy. And I'm not going to say the word that rhymes with that because I can't stand that word. But yeah, they are. <laughs> Brave. Yeah. Courageous. Sorry. That is such 
a lie. David Steele, a 20-year Marine Corps intelligence officer, the second highest ranking civilian in the U.S. Marine Corps intelligence and former CIA clandestine services case officer, had this to say, most terrorists are false flag terrorists and are created by our own security services in the United States. Every single terrorist incident we have had has been a false flag and has been an informant pushed on by the FBI. In fact, we know we now have citizens taking out restraining orders against FBI informants that are trying to incite terrorism. We've become a lunatic asylum. We have a lunatic asylum that is so evil and so dangerous and so vapid of any morality. And innocent people get destroyed.